afternoon. This is Sean at Printer Pot. Today we're going to take a look at the, another look at the wooden canoe design. As you can see, it's changed quite a lot from what you saw last. If you tuned in earlier, uh, what you turned in earlier, you would have seen something along the lines of. Let's see if I can turn these off. Something along the lines of this. Didn't exactly look like a canoe. It's more like just a simple shape to try to mit match the printer bed. And I realized, hey, that's hideous. So we moved forward from there. I got some pictures overlaid to try to give it more dimensions as a actual canoe. And then we filled out some sketches to represent the various shapes. As you can see the kind of sketches that I made. Um, this is always useful. Um, sometimes I don't like making the sketches, but this tends to be useful because later on down the road you'll be like, oh man, I really I really want it to be this shape or I really want it to be that shape, but I have to go back and sketch it now. Well, if you sketch the shape out ahead of time, making the lofts and the other stuff required can be a lot easier. So you can see I actually I made a nice straight line back here. This is a pot. Keep in mind it has to be flat. You want to keep in mind your basic requirements. Uh, it has to sit on the ground. That's actually the back of it. Um, the bottom where it sits on the printer is also flat. And so I've, I've taken some, an actual canoe would have a, a different drafted uh, backside, but I've taken some liberties with that. And from there, what you kind of see is that We've built a number of supporting shapes to give it this nice look here. And we'll walk through that real quickly. So I did a lot of interesting things in here. Early on, you'll, you'll remember that I had, I had done some things like um, I made some lofts to try to get it to make sense. Um, I made a cut and then another cut again to try to make it make sense and it just it would not be a solid body even this you can't make an edge out of this you can't even make a hole out of it you can't even make a pot out of it because for some reason uh, fusion 360 just does not consider it to be a solid so what we did is we kind of moved forward from there um, we started taking a look at some other shapes I made this shape here this is just a simple sketch from here, pushed back through. And that didn't work either. You can see I, I lofted a body through it and then I cut that away using a combine. So, and this is a valuable feature. I'm gonna use this later on. It's rather useful. You use you pick two features and you cut your you use it and you cut it with a splitting tool. What that gives you is a new body, like this one. And you have just the outer body now, and there's an inner body as well. But what I found is that this inner body was actually more useful later on. Um, but the design's still not good enough. So I went a little further. Um, we have this one here. Just a little more, a couple more combines. Uh, made some new planes. This plane here. We used it to define our next angles because I figured out, hey, this isn't working at all for me. So this is the canvas option. If you're having a lot of trouble with the design, uh, sometimes the best thing to do is just to throw the entire thing away and start from something that actually works. So what I did is I found some, some canoe shapes that are in the actual shape that I wanted. Found a top and a side view uh, that I liked and I'm going to use them as a model for my thing and that's here that's attached canvas and you can basically take this and you can stretch it and you can pull it in all the different ways you want and I actually overlaid this over my previous sketch here to try to get the dimensions right again every sketch you make 
will help you even if you don't end up using it it's going to help you later on because that those first sketches i made were dependent and based on the planes i needed to use inside the printer because if they weren't right the printer wasn't going to be able to print them uh, again, what you're seeing is a lot of it, several hours worth of iterations and tweaking to get these planes into the right shape. And and uh, I had to redefine a couple of sketches based on different planes. You have to twist things around. Um, it's a lot of fun. There's just a redefined sketch plane option I had to use a lot here to try to get them to be in the right shape. And they are centered, which is useful. Okay, So now I've got this new shape I worked with. I, I, the first time I cut this really low shape, I actually followed the model. Uh, it turned out to actually cut a lot of what I actually thought the pot would be. It gets it cuts away a lot of the, what could actually be the pot. I mean, you need a, a deep pot. So I said, hey, that's not working. And you can't see it here, but my first cut was here, and I adjusted the sketch out to here. This is just a simple spline. If you click here, and if I was in edit sketch mode, you can see that this is a spline and I could twist and pull it using these handles here. Just one second. Sorry about that. And so that's what we have going on there. Um, from there, this the, the nice thing about Fusion 360, the, the whole parametric styles, you can go back and adjust anything anytime, and you can go then s just move forward and kind of change it as you go. My new sketch is here. This here was the new body. I went with the same style. I made one single block and then I'm going to cut away from it. Uh, starting with a block and cutting away from it tends to give better solids than starting with a loft. Uh, sometimes the lofts don't work. If you want to create a, a solid straight from the, if you want to create a solid straight from a sketch, the lofts just, they really struggle to, to function in a way that you really want them to. So what we're going to go with here, we're going to, we're going to, we extruded the volume we want, and then we're going to start carving away from the volume. Uh, another assisting plane. This is, looks like, it was one of the height planes. I think that this is one of the ones where I, I started using a, a special feature, and uh, if, if you like this kind of stuff, you might find it useful. This one back here, I hadn't seen this feature. This is the first time I've used it, so I'm going to mention it. Normally, I use a projection. That's where if you take, um, you take, you're in a sketch plane, a flat sketch plane. We'll go ahead and take a look at this a little closer. We're in a flat sketch plane like this, right? You can see that the plane itself intersects this body across here. You're drawing directly on this plane. I don't like to use 3D sketches. Number one, I don't know how to use them yet. I plan to know, but I don't know the, how to use them yet. And number two, they can actually, if you turn on the feature here, it can actually make your sketches more complicated and not so easy. So it's best to keep your ideas sliced through a plane. And you can see the way this slices through this plane here. But what I really wanted to get was not the whole projection of the angle. And the whole projection of the angle would give you, if you projected move this body out of the way. If you projected this whole thing here, what you'd get is a, a solid line across the plane from here to the outer bounds of it. You would get a, a solid line and it would look, it would go from here to about here on the end of it and it would just be a solid line. That's not exactly what I wanted. So if you go in here, you can find this intersect one. And what this does, instead of projecting the whole curve the whole thing into your the the current plane you're working on it curves just the intersection point and that's what that's what I really wanted anyway so each one of these points in this spline is actually bound 
to one of the intersection projection points. And you can see, if you get really close to this one, this little symbol here represents the projection of this intersected line with this plane. Which is extremely useful. I did have to pull it back, but you'll see with the other ones that I did it pretty well. Going forward, I made, I made another plane. You'll see that I made each one of these planes. Uh, they're about 30 millimeters apart, so you can kind of get the size of this. 30 millimeters, oh, I don't even know. Pulling out the calipers, 30 millimeters is just over one inch. So it must be different than that. I can't imagine that being only one inch. No, never mind. This is 171 millimeters up in the air. So we're dealing with uh, up above six. It's around six and three quarters up in the air inches, or 171 millimeters. That's th so we're going to have four of these coming down. I'll show you the, the walkthrough of each one of these. So we we created this here, and you notice I made a flat edge here. And if you looked real close at this sketch. What I made, you'll see these are tangent points. This represents a fillet. This was actually here, here, and then to here. And this represents the intersection of the center point of the other sketch, which, if I'm following all my dimensions and my sketches properly, is the center point of the entire boat. So that's important to know. Um, and since I've focused almost entirely on coming from the origin, all my planes are kind of focused on the origin as well. So. I can kind of follow the green, uh, the green axis, just coming down from this plane. Um, this here is a fillet. These represents tangency. So the end of each one of these fillet, and the fillet is 16 millimeters in from the corner. So the actual corner is out here. But the radius of the circle here is 16 millimeters. So from here to there, which represents this arc. So if you took the fillet option, you pointed it at a point like this one out here. This one's not valid because it's it's bound coincidentally to the projection point. If you point it at there and you click, you can then specify a fillet point. And that just rounds the sketch. Our canoe should not be sharp on any points because if you look at the canoe here, everything is rounded. So we don't want rounded points. We want, if we want, if we're going to get flatness simply for pottery, we're going to have to make it rounded. So this is the nice round shape we're going to use later on. And I think on some of them I actually used mirrors, uh, but for the most part, this comes out. This comes out here. I record the the angle, and then that angle I actually dimension it out to 35. Um, and knowing that distance is important because I need to know the distance to go to on this side. And then you'll see my fillets are actually both on the same side. Um, you can use mirrors. Uh, I did that earlier and I found that I had a small error of about one millimeter on one of my sides where the millimeter, the, the one side sketch point did not match up with the projection point. So sometimes if I mirrored from this side and mirrored over to this side, this projection point, I had to come all the way in. This point was actually over here. And this this didn't project it didn't line up. And when you're trying to loft, if your sketches are off by just a tiny bit, it'll say, "Hey, some of your rail lines are not intersecting with the profiles." And it won't mm -hmm. tell you which one. It won't point out which one. It won't tell you where it's happening. It won't give you any coordinates. It'll just say, "Can't do." Which is kind of frustrating, because it must know. Just doesn't know how to tell you but hey that happens all the time in regular life as well anytime you have a language barrier um, so let's, let's keep going there's my next sketch you see I made down there it's about the same shape but we're getting a little bit wider um, notice that this is actually following the curve of the boat which is good let's turn off those construction lines I made the th last plane here's my last plane down here not totally on the ground, but this actually represents being really close to the bottom. 
And here is body 7. I just made this. Body 7 is the front curve of the boat. You might think that's strange, but let me show you what's going on here. Um, I switched into... This is a orange extrusion rather than a blue extrusion, and that's because I had switched into patch mode on this. Now the patch mode allows you to not create solids. Solids require volume. Um, I didn't want volume yet. I just want to take a curve and extrude it widely. So let's take a closer look. I selected the curve of my boat um, and all I did was say, hey, symmetrically, just get real wide. And I just drug it out there and I got this big wide plane and you can see it has a slight curve to it, which is useful. And I think we can turn this one off. We don't need that one anymore. And then I split the body that we have. Let's see. I think that we have now these two bodies here. And they are split. And if you turn off everything else, you can see that what I have is this body here, which is basically the top of the boat, has now been cut away from the previous body here. And some of these other bodies, they're just like archive bodies. Which I think is pretty cool. And that's kind of step one. And if you were making this out of solid wood, guess what the first thing you would do? You'd have a big block of wood and you would cut it away. You know, you, you would just cut it away. And this, in this case, I've done the exact same thing. To add a big block of wood, I cut away what I didn't want. And it, what's what I'm left with is the stuff that I actually like. I mean, isn't that nice looking? So the next thing we're going to do is I create a loft. And if you turn the sketches back on, you can see that what I've done is pretty fancy. We only have two profiles. And I did this again in patch mode because I don't, I'm not looking for volume. The, this thing, trying to get this thing to recognize volume at this point was just too difficult because I would have to I th I'd need a a wide plane here I need to project it to some kind of volume plane here it has to have area and then I have to project it to a third one that has area and when you put take those three together you get a volume a piece with thickness and width well that was just too complicated for this thing to handle right now so I just took my existing sketch curves and I lofted them using the patch mode and we get a single sheet these aren't even there's zero thickness to these it's just a shape and then in the next step you can see I have just the two profiles that's this profile here and that profile there that's it and if you remove the rails this will just become a flat plane straight across I don't want to show it because I really don't want to mess with the rails right now so I could click cancel here. I'll show you. I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll click cancel. It's fun. This is just a flat plane across. Then all I do is select rail. I say, hey, go to that one, and look, it's already starting to do it. But that's not exactly what we want, is it? Let's pick the second one. And this is the part that comes more refreshing because you have to select each one of these curves now. Because this is one single curve. These are uh, a compound of curves. So we'll just click cancel. And that gives us that nice wide shape down at the bottom for a planting area along with uh, a place so that when you put the planter on the ground, it doesn't fall over. Uh, next thing we do, I have the bottom of the boat. I, I just extruded that part. I'll turn off that sketch there. Uh, da, 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 da. The sketch can go away. And we can actually get rid of that sketch. We'll just get rid of both sketches. So you can see I have the bottom here now. And it's, it's broken up into two pieces. I'm not exactly sure why. But it's not that important. You can see all I did was extrude from this profile on the front to the profile on the back. I do have some concerns with it right now. Uh, 
because I'm not sure it's actually flat. So when I print it, I might have to like lower it down onto the surface because this is actually the only surface that's going to touch the printing bed uh, and it's not that big. But we'll see what happens. At this point with five millimeter walls, I'm not really concerned with, uh, I should be. It's something we'll have to take a look at. But since this is parametric, I can come back and tweak it later on. Now the next thing we have to do is we have this body. This body is the actual body we plan to use at this point. Uh, I tried lofting it several times through this point and combined the bodies and it just was not letting me do it. Uh, again, it's giving ambiguous errors about uh, the two bodies not intersecting. And you can see clearly, clearly that they are intersecting. On top of that, when you do it, there's an option to extend the bodies and make them intersect. And the extension option was not extending in a way to make them intersect. So I shrugged, moved the body a little bit forward because I figured that this part up here to me looked a little bit suspicious. Maybe it wasn't fully intersecting. And you can't get a good split if the two bodies don't fully intersect because the if the bodies are still touching, you're not splitting. You're just cutting a zero plane surface through the thing. I mean, there's not even a volume to the thing. So uh, as long as they're still touching, there's no, it's not a real split. You don't get separate bodies and we need separate bodies. So then I joined in this next step. These t The other problem I had was these two bodies here, this body, and this body were actually separate at this point. So I actually used the surface stitch, again, only available in the patch mode, to patch the two together. Uh, then we combine surfaces. And this is the part where, if you went back a step, and you took a look, you have this body here. And you have this body here. So when I combine surfaces, and this this previously before the step was actually two bodies. You see there's two bodies here. The actual thing down here and this part up here. And I was trying to splice just this top this top part uh, and split that, and that also was causing problems. So I joined the two together before I did the next split. There's the join, and here is the split. And what we end up with is this being useless this being useless. And this is the basic shape you see today. So my next favorite thing when, when designing pottery is the shell feature. And that basically, I can just take any basic shape, pick a face, and cut five millimeters away from all sides. Important thing to remember, if you have any exterior shapes before you do this that you want to have cut out, you have to do it before the edge shape because you need to have the inside have uh, if it has to be a certain thickness to hold the water, so you have to have all your cuts be at the same length. Now, I think the shape, if you look at it in general, is sort of boring. So I wanted to give it a little bit more dimension, and, and I'm not even done yet. But what I did next, and this is fancy, I have to tell you, um, this is the first time I've tried this in patch mode. You can take one of these sides here, and you can, what is it called? Oh, I don't even know now. Aha, I offset the face. And that, that's what I was trying to go for, because I wanted to have this curve. I wanted to repeat down the sides of the pot. So this offset face option, if you select this curve here, and then you select offset face, it says, hey, well, how far back do you want that face to go? And guess what I can do then? Offset face, offset face, offset face, offset face, offset face. I've got a series of these bodies now. They're just like the previous bodies that I used to split before. And then all I need to do is say split, 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 split. 
and you can see that they're all different colors. I, I managed to do that afterwards. I want to give the different bodies shape. So we'll take all of these and we'll make them go away. Now to make it give even more shape, because if I printed it right now, it would still just be one uniform surface. Even if, even if I export them as different shapes, it would still be one uniform surface. So by having them be different bodies, Fusion C360 allows you to do interesting things like chamfers and fillets with those bodies. So what I did was we take half these bodies and we'll, we'll remove them. You get something that looks like this. Not sure what that last bot here is. This up here. I removed that one too. Um, what I did next is I started chamfering and cutting away at these bodies. If you zoom in real close, you can see the chamfering and the filleting. This body here had some problems with what I was doing and it still does. Uh, but these are things you're going to clean up later. I didn't quite like what I was doing. But you have to zoom in pretty close. You can see this actually has a rounded edge you can see. And on the darker bodies, select these, click V. And on the darker bodies, I was able to get a chamfer because that's what I was originally going for. Chamfer, you may be wondering. I hope you're not wondering, but you might be. A chamfer is a cut that just cuts away perpendicular to that line. So this is a 0.2 millimeter cut down that side and a 0.2 millimeter cut down that side. It happens on an edge. And so we get, uh, I actually selected the whole entire edge all along the outside. Luckily, I wasn't doing this during a live stream because this actually was quite CPU intensive, but it's all finished now. Um, each one of these edges has a nice chamfer bit. And here, let me show you what it looks like when we have all the pieces together. If you zoom in real close, you actually get what looks to be an actual wood plank, the edge of one, right in there. And this is a 0.2 millimeter difference, which means it's not going to make the printer do much besides jiggle at that point. But for a canoe, which is made out of just wood planks, you don't need much more than just a jiggle, at least in terms of your cuts and trying to add definition to the thing. see I don't think there's not much else we did so the next thing we're gonna play with today now that we've walked through what we've done so far these interesting aberrations in the fillet not sure I understand why they're doing that but I'm not too worried about it at the moment doesn't look from even from far away it looks kind of funny so the next plan is if I put plants in here what would happen the water would just collect to the bottom right um, and that's not exactly what we want I almost I'm almost certain it's preferably not what we want um, so oh, this is gonna be the difficult part We want drainage, is what we want. Now we can drain straight down. It's not ideal. Now in terms of a canoe, what I was thinking was to cut a hole back here. Along with, like maybe here, maybe cut a hole, or maybe over here, cut a hole, maybe two holes. And maybe, maybe even three holes, I don't know. But it'll be either, you can think of it as like a, a car exhaust. Uh, and it would just follow the line, maybe even of one of these. These are five millimeter walls. So if you look at these uh, in your little finger, and maybe if you even had a pen, a pen handy. Um, five millimeters, you can't even stick a pen in between it. But in terms of 3D printing, it's pretty thick. some ways you kind of wonder if I can go a little thicker. Did I make this five millimeters or is it bigger than that? I think it's five millimeters. Now, 
take a look. And that is quite simple. We'll go back to here. We'll take a quick look at how big this is. This is five millimeters. So how do we cut this up? And is this flat? It's not flat. I might be worried. I kind of like the shape though. That's pretty. And I'm pretty sure these actually have chamfers on them too. This might be one of those things where I just build a, put a raft at the bottom and, and print it right on top. Hope it sticks. All right, so if we were going to do this, we would take and create an offset plane. Is this not flat enough for an offset plane? Cancel. Create a sketch. Can I create a sketch here? Oh, this is going to be interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch just on the... Interesting. My sketch feature is missing. Usually there's a button there that says, hey, you want to create a sketch right here? And that's I click there and it creates a sketch. But it wasn't happening. Probably my problem more than anybody else's. And you know, if if I was a designer, the, f the next part I usually do is I usually pace around the room, reflecting on how this goes together in my head. And I do it, but for about two hours, I go to sleep and wake up the next day, and I do it some more. And I have enough ideas in my head that I can make something work. In this case, I'm not sure I have any good ideas. Because what we need right now is a way to create some piping along here. Now one way to do it would be to change my now, if you ever seen like um like uh, a drainage ditch in a yard, a drainage ditch uh looks kind of like let's see a pipe and you have to pick a path. Now, if I just pick like this path here, it's probably not going to like that, but we're going to play with it because it's fun. Spinning, spinning. And I can show you some of the other pipes I've made in the past. Uh, in the Aztec Planner has some really clever piping. Um, I created a solid body and then I cut it out and it became quite clever. This is going to be, I've lost my, my section size, but that's okay. So if you say six millimeters here, it's going to get pretty mad. Let's see what happens. Now six millimeters, this is, oh, I forget if it's radius. I think it's radius, which means it won't cut to the outside of the boat. It'll be three millimeters in all directions along that path. No, it is diameter. So it's going to cut. Is that radius or diameter? No, it says diameter. And but the center is, is based on the center of that path, and that path is five millimeters away from the outside, which means half of the path is three millimeters. So I should have two millimeters left on the outside of this still, and you can kind of see that's what it looks like. And this could give you a really interesting 
uh, drainage just by following the natural path but it does not touch the actual bottom you can see it's fairly high up so this isn't the droid that we're looking for but it's pretty cool and this is kind of what I'm looking for and if you ever see these in a yard you can go to home, like any any home to home like supply store and you'll see like a tube of plastic kind of like this that has holes in the top and basically you go into your yard you dig a trench you drop one of these in the bottom surround it with rocks put some rocks on top then put you know a patch of grass on top of it and although it doesn't look like drainage and although it, it doesn't have the characteristics of drainage the plastic tube with the holes on top and the rocks on top and a little patch of grass that will suck the water down out of multiple parts of your yard and run it away from important structures you might have uh, including sidewalks uh, patios you don't want water running onto or under those things because you're going to end up with a cave or a sinkhole all the time and uh, we don't want that uh, in this case this is a plant we don't want the water sitting on the roots we want them to drain away easily um, one of the things that we kind of look for in this is is an angled piping if you look at the piping in your house even uh, under the sink generally your pipes don't run 90 degrees they always run one to two degrees downhill uh, that's that's what you want if they don't go downhill you should be concerned um, especially with sewage you want your sewage pipes to be going downhill all the time uh, that's why they're special hangers if you see them if you have a real high piping you'll see special hangers up on the ceiling and you'll see like a one inch drop for every 15 feet something along those lines um, in this case what we're looking for is uh, kind of like a one per two two under two percent drop uh, kind of use your imagination as well think of, of where you want this to go um, how, how would water react in your mind if you're just to pretend and then maybe test a little bit you can get a bottle of water out and take a look now I'm trying to just do some simple things um, one thing about Fusion 360 you can't move the screen around without holding down control and then if you hold down control you trigger a recalculation of everything you just did if you're in the middle of a calculation that being said you can adjust the path if you wanted uh, this pipe to run only halfway down the path you can do it didn't hear it you didn't see it but I did just click and drag my mouse and we're waiting for it to resolve about 50% of the way down here like that you see my distance here changed this is actually a percentage distance the one if it represents 100% of the path um, you can't go above one it just says hey uh, I don't know what you're doing it doesn't tell you you can't go above one It just says hey I don't know what you're doing but that's what it's doing so you can kind of play with this if you want taper angle haven't needed had to use it twist angle I'm not even sure why you why you would need it but it's there um, we can create some square pipes we can create triangular pipes not really sure why but hey it's there for what we whatever what I need generally I, I've never needed one of those um, interesting things about this we can create a new body you can see that I have a new body now I can make this new body hollow you can see the hollow section of it there um, we can make this hollow section not be 1.5 but just a 0.5 wall keep in mind my printer probably won't even be able to print it but in terms of piping isn't that kind of what you want not an unprintability but a nice shape um, considering that you want two layers for everything and most of what I tend to print is around a 0.2 to 0.3 resolution vertically um, we're going to want also considering that most of my nozzles I'll use to print this would be a 0.75 so in reality we kind of want at least 1.75 wall 
if we go any smaller than that and I use the larger nozzle, it won't even it won't even be able to understand or slice or print the sliced material. And those aren't things we really want. Um, now if we just left it at 1.5, we'd actually get two two walls if we were really concerned about that. But there's not much actual hollow space left there. So it becomes kind of silly at that point. Why even use a pipe? Why just cut it away and just say hell with it? Just cut it away and let the water flow. If you have any questions, you just message us on uh, on Discord. Okay. I don't want that to be hollow now. Let's cut the whole thing out of there. And if you looked real close, you could see that this would actually cut a PL. And if you actually pressed OK here, this would come away and say, hey, it's done. You've got a big gouge in the side of your ship now, going all the way down. You can see that big gouge there, and you can see it actually gouged um, both of the materials, which is good. One thing, fun thing I like to do is turn it off for one material or the other, and you can do that in the objects to cut section down at the bottom. Say, so, hey, only cut that top part. You can make really weird things happen using simple objects. That's definitely not what we want to do, though. So what I'm thinking though, really, is we kind of want, if we see this shape here, I've highlighted it so we can see it. And we can change the visual styles to be a little easier to see. Oh, that really makes it interesting. Now it looks really like a boat with wooden planks, doesn't it? I think it's actually too thick, but I'll keep it at five because I'm such a big pot. You really want it to be a little bit thicker walled than normal. Um, let's see from the bottom. The boat will normally sit flat here, I believe. Uh, that looks like the flattest section here. Um, here's the inside bottom edge right here. So it seems to me like we actually want this pipe to be right along this edge here. If you can find that edge, that edge does not actually exist on the inside. That's an outside edge. So we need to figure out a way to make that edge exist. Now, if I were a designer, luckily I am, what I'm thinking at this point is that we want to have a pipe, but we need to find it, a path for it. How do we find a path for a pipe like that? We would need to make a sketch. Um, and we need, for the sketch, we need it to be on a plane. The plane has to make sense. Which, when looking at this, is all rather difficult. My initial instinct is to take a a plane angle, a plane at angle here, to create it here. I don't think you can even see it. Let me turn it on. Turn off some of these other ones. Oh, this is terrible. Get out of here. So we get the plane like this, right? And if we just built that straight up, it wouldn't quite work. And if we put like this, kind of pointing down, if I put it like this, uh, it might work. But it's all very hard to calculate from this angle. 
there's no lines for us to easily draw a sketch onto up here unless you know I think I might have a plane already that does this I have a couple see this big long plane here is almost the right angle for this and we could actually offset it to be closer to the bottom and then we could actually just draw the paths we want with the, the thing um, and even though the paths themselves on the sketch are just spline lines going down uh, and, and they look like they're on a straight plane as long as they're angled in the right direction the water should flow out and not stay in I'd still like to stick with an actual pipe that you would use underground style because if you don't the water will and the dirt will actually just clog up the pathways for the actual water to go so what we need is is uh, an enclosed hollow pipe with holes punched into it at uh, a number of different dis distances um, I'm currently thinking we need three pipes uh, one for each of the sides and then one for the middle so the first I think that I think that we need to make a new plane still although I like this one that we have here it's not quite working for me so we'll take this angle here we're going to rotate it up to match the other one so we're at negative 80 degrees now if you see here it's not quite right because we kind of want it to go from this point up to just a little bit higher and we're going to use it's going to be a pipe let's see what happens we don't want it to be negative 80 though we want it to be just Let's see what happens if we go a little bit less. Let's go negative 78. It's actually a little bit more. I tilted it the wrong way. You can see that it's bulging just a little bit right there. So we'll go the other way, which will be negative 82. See it's bulging on the other side now. Now, an even a more intelligent way to do this would be to create a line where you want the pipe to end, and maybe even a circle to help. That will give you some, some reference points. So let's create a sketch down here. We'll take a look at this again. Where do we want our pipe to end? And so rather to, let's just find this confusing. I have to spin it around because uh, seeing the world upside down is a little bit weird. And let's get it a little bit more straight. And I'll pull straight down on it. Okay, this is almost doable. We're now looking at the canoe from behind. Um, and I think that what we're going to do project so I can see and then remove what I don't want to see project 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 and project and and I'd like to be able to project this outside edge or at least this bottom edge that's not going to help me though there uh, if I project these lines it'll be pretty close oh, that's kind of awkward see I've made mine so I can see it from the bottom but what it actually looks like is it looks like this 
So a lot of my lines are kind of weird. Uh, I think we're going to cancel it. Oh, is it too late? I've already got my projections. We'll undo them then. There. This is thinking mode. Give me a second. So you can see here our back plane. We'll turn off our bodies entirely. This is our projected back planes here. Um, these are our previous. I'm not sure why I'd want to see any of these right now. This is the back of our boat. Um, when we look at it, the profile, it actually comes down here a little bit further. Uh, you can see that these actually are not complete profiles because that's where the chamfers are in between the different bodies and their, their cutouts and their edges. So, if you looked at the body again, you can see the back edge is right down here. If I could, I'd love to know this degree here. This degree would be wonderful to know. See, I could just about set this as the bottom or the front. So I've just reoriented the origin, I believe. Let me see if I have. Now the origin's still in its freaky shape. But now I can look at it from the left, look at it from the front, and it has the same thing. The origin hasn't changed, and it's still at that strange angle. But this sure does add some interest to it, doesn't it? Are you not entertained? That's what they would say if they were uh, if they were talking. Okay, so five degrees down. So this is kind of the level that we want our pipes to be at. Now this would be this is ten here. We don't really want 10. I want just a little bit less than that. So we'll go with 8. It's going to give us this. We'll go with 7. Uh, 6. We'll go with 7. This may seem trivial, but it's, it's actually quite important. So now we have this plane here. And this is from this point that I think we're going to uh, push a pipe through here. Now the way the water runs is if there's nothing in a pipe and it is horizontal it just runs from the highest point to the lowest point and the more water you add it's going to fall out the end and as long as the end has a place to be it's going to go out that way um, that being said if the end is not big enough Water tension alone will keep this thing from flowing. So uh, I've tested this with the Aztec planner. Uh, you kind of have to have, on, uh, on even on tiny pipes like this, if you want water to run without having problems, um, a six millimeter diameter pipe is just as small as you want to go. And you can confirm this because if you ever look on uh, like if you ever put like, if you ever play with like small machinery and you had all these little pipettes, um, and there was like already like a water cooling in a CPU, uh, if you put water in a pipe that's that that small, and there's nothing physically pushing it out, uh, it doesn't even matter what way is up or down. The water tension alone will hold it in the pipe uh, because it's so full of water. Uh, 
uh, when you get to about six or seven, gravity is enough to keep it flowing, especially at the hopefully low volume flow we're talking about in planters. Um, if, if you're watering it using the full force of a hose, you might be overdoing it. Um, but these pipes should be able to hold like, like a seven millimeter pipe should be able to hold enough water flow through. Um, now the surface of this pipe is actually going to bubble up out of the top of the surface. But what's important is that the water has a place to flow down underneath the surface, uh, away from the plant's roots and away from uh, rotting, you know, creation, creating a rotting environment down at the bottom of the pot. Uh, so we need a way for water to flow to these things. In that spirit, you might say that um, we should have the, ro the, the surface of the bottom of the planter to be shaped like a roadway and be kind of slanted high in the top in the middle and down on the sides. But that would be a complete redesign of this pot that I'm not willing to do at the moment. But would it really? I think it would. I don't know. You know what? I don't know if it, I don't think it would be. This is a good idea. I could have just two pipes. I wouldn't need the third if I made the center of the boat higher in the middle. And it would not take that much rework at all. We could do this. Here, follow through with me here. This is this is where designing becomes fun. You've talked for half an hour and now you're like, oh man, this is the best idea. No idea if it's gonna work, but this is the best idea. So we're gonna reset our home view because this is actually more confusing than it ever was. Um, there we are back to our normal standing up. I'm sitting on a printer shape. Now, if we go back to our previous loft, you're gonna find sketch patterns from here all the way up through here. And I think this one, we might use this one. We're not going to use that one though. Um, turn off our bodies. Now what determines the bottom of the boat is this shape here plus five. That determines the bottom of our boat because of the beautiful, the beauty of the shell feature. I can come back this far and I think I'm back, we're going to come back to the, I think one of these. We'll have to figure out which one it is. I think it's this one. We're going to have to come back to this one. And we're going to bend these sketches that this is based on just a little bit to create a slight highway-like feature in the middle of the road. The water's going to run out to the outside and going to run down the sewer lines. It's going to be just like a city, but for your plants. It's going to be wonderful. Okay, so... These, these points here are based on intersection points with the other sketch. Here's our other sketch. So these lines, a normal point line would actually be white if it's unbound to anything. Like this, this, this point here is unbound, so it's white. This point here is black because it is bound. That actually might not be true, but that's how I'm interpreting it. The point is, is when I go in to edit these sketches, uh, it's gonna. We have to go in and we have to remove the binds. So if I click on this real close, I'll click on it again. This other sketch is getting in the way at the moment. Pull that aside. Now this is saying it's coincident with another, but it's not telling me. Where'd it go? I want to unbind it. Now, if I tried to drag this away right now, would it let me? It would. That's very interesting. But it's not doing exactly what I want. Undo. Now, the problem here is that these are considered horizontal at the moment. Out to this point here, these are considered horizontal. So if we have to actually remove this binding here, I've just removed that property, and we're going to see if this is going to let us bend. 
because it's not it's still not letting us bend. Um, this point is tangent uh, from this point here. Where is it? I want to see it. Here's the tangent point. Now I feel like this is going to cause me trouble unless I do something drastic. So we're going to do something drastic. I'm going to draw a new point entirely and then delete the other one. Now you can see that I have this degree line mark here. I'm at 173.8 degrees. That represents a 6% incline in the middle of the boat. So compared to what it was previously, this would be three, and you can count one, two, three and a half, maybe three and three quarters of a distance higher than it was previously. Um, that looks pretty good across there. We're talking about a three millimeter rise every 25 millimeters. I said before I was using like a 1 to 16 and you can do more trigonometry if you want but um, three should be plenty. But if you're going to be a good designer, not if you're going to be a good designer, but if you want to be a little more manageable in terms of numbering, you should probably use, where's that sketch go? I, need, I had a center plane here, I thought. Is that not it? No, these aren't helpful. It must be on a different one. Um, I think we're just going to snap to this point here or this point here. No, I think we're going to snap to the grid. Although it might not be ideal, but we're going to do it. So we snap to the grid there. Um, now, on this side, you're going to want to find your point again. I'm escaping out of my line tool because I want to find the point I'm drawing from. There's a the point I'm drawing from, and I'm going to draw a similar line to here. Now, you should be able to just. Well, I don't want to delete the line because I, I I don't want to get rid of it. But we're gonna we're gonna make it a construction line instead. Um, and we're gonna stop the sketch. Now, before I do this to the other sketches, uh, we're gonna test it real quick. It's currently rebuilding every single thing I've ever done. If you ever want to stop it from doing that, you should really you should really roll back to the point you need to be at. Because otherwise every time you make a, a, a small change to one sketch you're going to have 15 minutes of recalculation. Still waiting. Still waiting. Yep, still waiting. Sometimes Fusion 360 would also tell you, hey, I'm doing something right now. Leave me alone. Here's what I'm doing. But right now, it's just saying, just screw you. <laughs> OK, what we're going to do now, we're going to roll back here. Let's see, roll design back to here. So there's my next sketch here. We're going to roll, we're going to edit this feature and see if we can push the new rail see if it's already there. Oh, that's hard to see. I can't tell that it's done it. The, uh, the shape doesn't have much of a color to it. Um, let's remove all the rails and we'll see if we can redefine them. Now, rail 1 should be specified up here. It should be, oh, rail one is, they're calling that rail one. We'll remove it. Uh, select the rails. That's rail one. Now select this as rail two. 
Rail 2. Okay, let me see. G1. Let me see, configure that one. I want to make sure I haven't messed this up entirely. No, the first G1 looks good. Okay, so what I'm assuming that means here is that these points either aren't touching, they look like they're touching, they're not considered coincidental, which might be just a problem with constraints, or they're not flowy enough for the, the program to consider them being part of the loft. Like, how's that part of the loft, it says? How is that part of the loft? You must be kidding me. Get that out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark these as coincidental, just to make sure. I select one of the lines. I mark my coincidental. My mouse changes to say, hey, you're marking something that's coincidental. I select our other geometry. Coincidental. This one. Oh, I already have the, the properties. So uh, the next thing we can do, since that's coincidental, is fillet that corner just a little bit. Basically inc inconsequential. Sure is not consequential to me. It doesn't mean anything to me, but we'll give it a try. Stop the sketch, go back, we'll edit the thing again. Got rail one, rail two, rail two, no, rail, is it rail four that we're having a problem with? Rail four. Get out of here, rail four. Rail four, rail four, rail four, rail four, rail four, rail four, and rail four. Not G one. Well, that's frustrating. Now, if I removed all the other rails and just use rails throw whatever that is, uh, it still gives me an error. So this is a good place to end for today. Um, this is one of those insurmountable problems that I come across that's going to require a couple of days of thought. Um, I might read some videos. I can take this error message and go over to Fusion 360 and search for it, see what they're going to tell me. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what G1 means. Maybe that was something, some special, special language that designers use when they could just be, that doesn't work, or I need a smoother edge to go across that way, or maybe G1 means there's no cons continuity, there's not enough continuity between the different rails. Um, that probably isn't the case because even with only one rail, it still doesn't work. Um, see, and I bet if I if I went in here and I said, "Hey, take that, take that rail out," and I said, "Hey, put this rail, put this rail back in," follow this edge. See, this edge, these edges aren't even. Since they're marked as construction lines, I can't even select them now. I'll cancel. So you can see the number of things I'm f fighting with when I fight with Fusion 360. Uh, you think that small ideas like this would be easy to do, and it will just fight you until you, you die. It's true. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, send us any questions, leave comments on the live stream, and of course, go on over to Patreon. Find either our print -a -pod channel or our Patreon Aspiring Designers channel for print pot designers. And please join us because I'm doing this because I love it, because I want to see more designers in the world. I want to see creative people creating things. I've known too many creative people. You're sitting at home 
you're watching Netflix, you're playing games, you're playing other games that other people are making, other people are creating. I would like to see you create something for yourself. Join us today. Find out how you can. Get some inspiration. Get some motivation. You want a support structure? We have it for you. Join us, please. Seriously.